Good evening. Welcome back. Um, today I'm gonna continue where I left off last time, which is adding new roles or adding roles and permissions to my APIs. So a small recap of what we're doing for the past couple of sessions. Um, I see Case is in the chat. Welcome Case. He's yawning. So uh, what we're going to do today is uh, I, I have three APIs and I, all of them got some managed identities in Azure and I want service one connecting to service two and three and do this via the managed identity and have a successful response when they are uh, have the appropriate roles. Uh, so last time so I've already deployed uh, the APIs to Azure uh, in, a, in a research group. Uh, I've added some application registrations in the Active Directory and while I was doing this last time I discovered I needed an uh, Active Directory P1 in order to do application roles uh, which was annoying and I did some more research on it and found a couple of posts well not stating I should need it so uh, uh, they didn't uh, they didn't state I did need him so it's uh, I do th still think I need an ADP one for this to succeed uh, and if uh, but I'm going to try this evening to add application roles to my applications and do some authentication with this. If this doesn't succeed, I'll continue with security groups tomorrow, which is suboptimal, but I, I can't upgrade my AD account anymore. I already spent uh, my trial uh, earlier. So I, I think this will, uh, this will uh, succeed. Um, so let's see, uh, let's see how it goes. Um, I'll show you the code, what I've been doing. So uh, I've got a couple of uh, app registrations over here. These are the APIs I want to uh, do some authentication uh, with. Uh, the, the pipelines, so everything is deployed. Of course, via uh, an ARM template, and in the ARM template, I have the managed identities of the applications. So nothing fancy so far, or at least this is all rather basic stuff. If, you, if you've done some uh, APIs and you've done some ARM templates. So and, and now for me to continue on the Active Directory. So, uh, if you followed uh, along, you saw me at the end of the session, the live coding session, I found a post on Medium, uh, having a step-by-step -step, uh, walkthrough of what I should do. And this is the stuff I remember I did a couple of months ago. So adding app registrations, uh, doing some app roles, adding some app roles and a manifest, uh, stuff like this. And I think I did this on a free AAD, but I'm not sure anymore. So I'll try out the uh, stuff which is mentioned over here. Who's the author? Danny Shemesh. I, I hope I pronounce his name correctly. So it's a rather recent post, 22nd of October of uh, 2019. So I, I have a uh, good hope. So no, nothing states I need a premium or a P1 or P2, three. Feel free to leave comments. So, uh, so he explains a bit uh, on the different authentication flows, which are, well, it's which is a good, uh, which is a good read, uh, and and he goes along uh, what we need to do in AAD. So. My screen is big enough to have both in the browser window. Uh, there it is. I also have a post uh, myself doing uh, lots of this stuff. Uh, so I, I think we should be good this evening. And if I fail, 
I fail and we'll do security groups tomorrow. So let me start the music again. If the music is too loud or too soft, let me know. I've tested this out this, this uh, afternoon and I thought it was alright when me speaking and the music wasn't too loud. But let me know. So we did this. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll skip this for now because uh, this is uh, from my own blog post and I was a couple of steps further along here because I already had the application ID and some uh, uh, some stuff in my config settings so in order not to do too much shameless plugging I'll use uh, I'll use the post of uh, of Danny <coughs> So he starts with uh, creating some applications, application registrations in the AAD. Well, this is something we did already, so no problem here. A new registration, that's this one. Choose appropriate name. Well, we have the. Let me let me zoom in a bit. We have the secure API speakers and the secure API conferences. So that's already there and then custom service roles so this is where I got stuck last time uh, let's see if I can add the appropriate roles so he speaks uh, or he does this with um, service A and uh, service B and in his post his sample service B needs to connect to service A uh, and for me, I have my API needing to connect to uh, the speakers and the conferences. I see my my uh, what's it called? What's it called? My my Chroma key is a bit uh, sensitive. Let me dial a bit back. I've did this before the cast or before the coding session and it was still a bit lighter so uh, I guess the sensitivity can go uh, a bit back, a bit lower okay next so we have this application bl registration blade so we did this now we need to go to the manifest and add application roles. So let's first do it for the speakers. And as I mentioned last time, we want a reader and a writer speaker role. So let me make it a bit bigger for you all to see. So I'm streaming to Twitch in 720p. Uh, I hope it's readable. If you want to view it back a bit sharper the recording is 180p and it's on uh, YouTube uh, later on so in terms of quality or visual quality it will be a bit better and sharper over there so the app rolls this one is empty at the moment I are already also specified I want the security groups in, inside the claims so this is what we did last time uh, because I thought we couldn't use app rolls let's, let's see how it goes so I'll just copy this piece it over here probably can do tabs I can oh nice Tab. This one over there. Allowed member types application. This is the type of user uh, which who can connect to it. Reader role. Well, this is this is all, all nice. So uh, service uh, speaker service reader. So. Uh, 
This is a very nice uh, gruit, so uh, mules gruit. And let me do this again. For this roll. Is enabled through, and this is uh, the, the value, so. Uh, so it's your API dot speakers. So what was my application called? Conferences and speaker. Okay, maybe this should be plural also. Let's make it consistent. Your API speaker. So the value can be anything you want. Uh, just this is uh, a convention I see happen a lot. So the right role application. So this this should be it. Let me close this down. Add it. The ID could be anything, but a good is a good idea. So this is all we need for now because I won't be implementing deletes at the moment and writing is pretty much the same as updating or at least in my vocab vocabulary for now at least so what do we have now Click on save. Setting the application ID URI. Generating app credentials. So we already have this, expose an API. So we have this uh, application ID, which is good. So all we need to do now is assign roles to, uh, to my API to my front-end API. So this, this should be quite doable. Repeat the buffer shows B. I don't think... I think we can skip this step because we don't need to add roles uh, on service B in, in my case. Uh, in our case, in my case this will be service B in the blog post example and this is service A and this is also service A so only these two need to have application roles and an application a registration in AAD and this one just needs an identity or at least that's what I think let's see if I'm correct so I'm skipping this for now, unless you have a better idea, and I will add it. Generating application credentials, also not very necessary, or at least I think it's not necessary because I'm using managed identities. So let's read real quick. Go to service B, the client of service A. Adding secrets, yeah, this is what you need to do if you're not using missed identities. I assume. So credentials, the secret, the secret is something you should hold secret because it's in the name. Issuing and inspecting your first OAuth token. This is something I didn't know, but it makes sense. You can test this. On behalf of service B, let's see it in action. So go to the registration blade. Uh, I have this overview. So the endpoints. I never used this button, but apparently it's useful. <coughs> so the endpoints. Copy the auth token endpoint v2. Token endpoint 
me yes that's this one okay and make a post to this endpoint so I've got Nightingale set up over here and a new so this might be a bit small I'll zoom in a bit later so Grant to a post body JSON post. Can I do some cache that JSON? So cool. What's the D? Oh, I don't think this will work, because I have to specify the secret over here. Uh, let's move along, and I don't know how to do this with a managed identity, because I'm logged in, well, Nightingale isn't logged in as an identity, so it probably needs to fetch a token, or fetch the secret. And then, uh, in order to specify it, yeah, I need to get the bearer token in order to specify it. So that this won't work. Default, you should have a valid token. Yada yada. So all of the fields explained. Useful. Granting custom roles to an Azure AD application. So this is this is useful. However, this is an AD application. So, and as he already mentioned, you can do this via adding a, adding a scope in the expose API. Um, was this there before? Speak a read, speak a write. Allow application to write speak um save to disabled save save so what's in the manifest now app roles writer roles service a Speak so the writer. Okay, so as you can see, OAuth permissions, OAuth two permissions, those are over here, which are different things compared to app roles. So uh, let, let me clean up these these just real fast. Yes, I want to delete this scope and this scope because we won't be using it anymore. So and what, what Danny already mentioned is you can only use these when you're using some kind of user consent scope. And since we're in an API, it's quite hard to do user consenting. So we might do some delegation but that's not something we're in for now only applies that's what he mentioned client credential flow application role instead Apparently you can do this with the Graph API. Let's break it down. What he does is he makes an AZ REST method post to well to the Graph API and some explanation on this. 
so this is all, all good. So this is exactly the same as I did in my own post. The differences I used, let me let me check. Some PowerShell command in order to do this. Or not. I know I did a PowerShell command, it's probably in a... In, uh, yes. So this is a po post by uh, Jonas Westlin, uh, which I got most of the inspiration from in my own post. And what he does is having some PowerShell uh, command with a new Azure AD service app role assignment. Also specifying the object ID, some principal IDs, stuff like this. Thing is, I don't have this version of the Azure PowerShell uh, Azure PowerShell installed on, on this machine. I only got the CLI on this machine, so I can't use this at the moment. Well, let let me let me check. Let me check before. It's not recognized, so I won't be using this. But I think this should be doable with the managed identity also. Because what? Let, let me just make this a bit more pretty. So we have code. Where is it? For uh, miles language power so a bit better so what do we have you have an old version of powershell uh, not now okay okay so what do we have over here az rest so i am logged in with azure cli so this will work or at least it should work I thought you needed to use a backtick instead of a... Hmm. So if I use a backtick... Uh, yeah. Might be me. So let's first change this. Oh, this is the body. Oh, we shouldn't. Uh... So the body. So we're making a post. Service A enterprise object ID. Yes, this makes sense. The app role assignments. So service A is the service we have defined the app roles in. So let's do this. So this is the. I'm in app registration right now. So I need to go to the enterprise applications. Speaker. This is so annoying. Speakers. So this is the object ID I need. So, and the object ID of the Enterprise API is different compared to with the one from the application registration. So, this, this song is a bit loud on my headphones. I quickly want to check what, what the sound is on Twitch. One moment. One moment. Twitch. One moment. Twitch. One moment. Twitch.
Okay. Well, it's not too bad, in my opinion. Unless you say so, and I will make it a bit louder or softer. So this was the service A and fresh object ID. I'll copy it over here also. Uh, app role ID, so let me make it a bit bigger. Service B object ID. So this is the menest I think this is the menest identity. Let's Let's quickly peek in, in Junas is, uh, is post on this. So what he said, principal ID, object ID, object ID, principal, MSI generate principal IDs. Resource ID is the ID of the API service principle. So he has the resource ID, principle ID, ID, and the object ID. The ID of the role. So that that's easy. Let's go to the application registration. Go to the role. So I want the reader role, which is this one. So I'm going to code the role ID. So I have the principal ID, principal type, service principal, and the resource ID. So this is the resource ID and the object ID. <coughs> and I want, let me pick, yes. So I have the resource ID and the object ID should be the same. Object ID and principal ID are both the MSI generated service principal. Okay, so that's a mismatch to this post, or I'm reading it wrong. The app role ID. The role ID. The principal ID of the enterprise application of service B. So this is the this is probably the main identity. Target resource. Yes. Target resource. So, probably want to check the managed identity. Um, can I check them over here? Your API readers has the service principal, the object ID. So this is the. I already added them to a, a group. So uh, I already added the main identities to a group in order to do the security groups flow uh, technology. But I'm trying out this now. So copying the object ID, go to code. Then we have a word wrap. Word wrap. Okay, better. So now we have this. This sounds about right. Uh, 
this, this looks alright. So let's let's just run it and see what happens. Where's the terminal? Um I wonder if this is okay. The highlighting is a bit strange. <laughs> maybe this maybe, maybe this works better. I'm not sure. I'm not much of a with a single let's see if this this is a bit better no why not unrecognized arguments headers it's probably because of the space <clears throat> works apparently it found everything it even found the name of the principal so I have good hopes I have good hopes the proper ID yes Alternatively, and we will get something like this. Verify. So I'm going to the enterprise application again. So the enterprise application. Secure API speakers it has a different icon now. That's nice. So where did I need to go? So to say, users and groups. Yes. So it has a it has a role now. You might have noticed this object ID shown in app registration. Yes, those are different. Mm, okay. Maybe because this is a. Let's see what edit. No, non selected. So, this uh, application will appear on the X panel for assigned users. So I don't see any roles assigned over here, which might mean this doesn't work. And also when pressing edit, I don't see any, any roles. That might be because these are I've assigned an app role. And also on this screenshot, doesn't render search principal types correctly. Okay. At the time of this recording, it also doesn't show it correct. Well, it does have a nice icon nowadays. Still, no rolls, no app rolls, which is something expected probably. Difference between app registrations. Okay, this is the difference in object IDs. Not gonna do something with this. Inspecting. So again with the client secret. So there's also some something about managed identities over here. Enforcing tokens can only be used. You should replicate one or more. Oh, this is useful. 
didn't notice, but yes, I want this. User assignment required. So this means whenever someone or something wants to contact my application, it has to have some assigned role, which is useful. Using managed identities. Let's see what we need to do now. Creating an identity. So he's using a virtual machine. I'm using app services. Potato, potato. It all does the same thing. Should output should be something. Creating identity. Yes. Well, yes, this is the same thing. Assign a custom role to the identity. So this is probably, or probably, it should be exactly the same as what we did before. So again, with this method, uh, as you rest, back take, back take. Principles, with this one, back take. Headers looks pretty similar. Yes, it's exactly the same. Principal ID, principal type, resource ID. So this is the same, like I expected. It to be. So let's maybe there's also some validation. Assign it. Log into the VM. Log into the VM and use IMDBS without secrets. Hmm, maybe, maybe I can do this in, in the portal. Let me check if I'm over here. There's also some CLI stuff I can do. Uh, console. Metadata true. What's IMDS? I've never heard of IMDS. I'm not sure. Azure Ma Azure Instance Metadata Service. Hmm. That's probably why I've never heard of it. It's something related to virtual machines. And I haven't used virtual machines in ages. Or at least not doing anything useful with them. I don't know what this is doing, so but not much. Maybe there's something else. Maybe I can do this uh, with uh, Kudu. <coughs> Debug console. I wonder if curl is installed.
apparently it is. It's some kind of a power shell. <laughs> Let's see what this actually is. Metadata. So this is probably the IMD S resource. So this looks familiar. This is the API endpoint. Identity client ID, which is probably the object ID of my service principal. Which was this, if I'm not mistaken. So we also have the... I can check it over here. Identity. Object ID. Yes. So and... Active Directory. Enterprise. No, I need application registrations. Expose an API. Copy. So that's this one. Oh, well, token endpoint. So this looks. Oh, well, token endpoint. Let's see if this works. Toggle off. You've already seen this. Slash token. So let's see what happens if I do this. Missing argument session tribal. Okay. So that won't work. Is there some other? Thing I can try. Maybe in a terminal. I hope not. Well, I can do something. Oh, this is probably uh, 404. Wow. Sign into your account. Okay. Makes sense. <laughs> so this this doesn't work. Let's, let's just add some code to it then. I already had some... I already have Visual Studio open. With this. And... So this... This service needs to invoke the speakers. Yeah. Which is something I don't know how to do without code or pretending to be validating. So this is a very useful post. Uh, I'll just put it in chat, so you will be able to read it afterwards.
uh, so my own post which has some code I can copy paste which is this so delete this put this inside application ID URI which is the URI of my managed identity if I'm not mistaken no 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 it's the application I need Mega Strikers in the above snippet. Special the resource you want to access. So this is the object ID of the resource I want to access. Which is this one. The, no, no, it's the 91. Yes, it's the resource ID. So come on. Highlight of the current line is pretty annoying, it's too bright. Uh, colors. No. Um, what's this called? Inactive line number. Active statement, no. What the, what is this called? The active line. So plain text, select text it. Line number Active statement. Now this is much brighter, much darker. Well, is it? Yes, this is not the same color. But there's also the resharper. Oh, I don't have. I don't have resharper. Okay. Highlight. It's something. Current. Current line. How to change your line color? Highlight current line active. That's the one. So this can be a bit darker. Mm, can be a bit even a bit more darker highlight here line Oh. 
patience. Sorry for this. I like your line. A little bit better. <clears throat> Why is this a way it can only up? What's this? Why is this complaining? Yes, that's because I need a dependency for this. Will it find it? No. What's the... Uh, no, guys. What's the correct uh, services app authentication? When? Two months ago. Sounds about right. Battery sharper installed, this would be a breeze. We'll probably do this right after the stream. So this will get me the access token, not something I'm using, I need the HTTP client, um, and of course an endpoint, so that will be the weather forecast endpoint. For now, uh, is this correct? API slash launch URL. I felt I needed the API in front of this. Maybe it's still in the history. The API, <coughs> access token, HTTP client. Uh, I need to add the, in the services, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere over here. HTTP client. <coughs> in order for it to be injectable. SCP client factory. There it is. Let me check a bit. Make HTTP requests. So I need to add HTTP client, 
And it's the factory. Okay, I thought I could just use the ACP client, apparently not. Client factory. Where is it? Where? Client factory, clear it, client. Client. Okay. Should be uh, doable or should be good enough. Wait a minute. Uh, let me see how I'm logged in. So, when using Manage Service Adapter, you can uh, change the way you sign in. Which accounts? Another user account. Let me. This one. I need to approve it. Should be logged in now. There I am. So this is a user which is not all call pods return. Goodbye. Well, no. Command exception. So, let's see what happens. Five. <coughs> no strength there. Sorry. I see your token. I've never seen this one. Seeing that one, no connection string specified. I had assumed it would just use this one. Connection string. Do I need it? Hmm. 
Hmm. This is also a useful post. Service authentication. Set environment. So can I do this? So this should be it. Under the select account. So is there a re-authenticate? I don't think so. No. No, I've just authenticated. It should be good enough. Let me first check if I can access this anonymous. I would expect not. Uh, oh, obviously this won't work. I need the correct URL. Uh, where's my Azure? Over here? No. Over here it is. So, Visual Studio. Can I access this URL? I would expect to get something similar to this. I can still access this, which is not what I expected. As I had set the authentication in my I know, I still have to specify uh, the uh, which identity this application is, so this will work, because, um, let me go back, so this application uh, is configured, but it's standalone. Active Directory, when I go back to the Active Directory and my app registration, app registration. So this app registration isn't coupled with the actual app service yet. I need to do this later. So, but hmm, I guess this should work. Apparently not. Return body. Um, I also want to know the access token. <coughs> Do I want to return? Click. 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 API response. API. So I have the brain. So I have the access token. I have the body. New API call details. Ok. 
Oke. Okay. Kita Why is this squiggly? Oh yeah, we had an error about the connection string and I had found a post on it. Console. Connection string support. Okay. Environment variables for my user Azure services. So let me add this one. So I've added this to my environment variables. Hopefully I don't need to reboot for this. No connection string specified. Stuff could not be acquired. Was not found in tenant resource principle nine one. Was not found. Okay, that's not what I expected. So this is the, oh, this is the app registration, enterprise application, speakers. So maybe I should just deploy this stuff, see what happens. Get fork. Um, instead of Doing a complete, uh, doing a complete CI/CD, which takes up minutes. Oh man! So where is it? There it is. Select existing. Okay. Publish. Just 
just to make it a bit more faster. So this should deploy my application. There it is. Test weather forecast. So it's probably some error, some exception, or not. Yes, there is. Okay. Um, over here, maybe there's something in the the web app insights. I don't have it set up. Have I? No. It's not very useful. Uh, is there some way I can debug this stuff without a bit? No. don't recommend doing this in a normal application. Changes are applied. Yes, I have a lot of annoying stuff now. <laughs> Added my properties. So let's see if some error is being locked, some exception. Failures. This might take up some time. Let me go back to my uh, blog post. So the application ID URI. New registration. New app registration. Configure the app registration. Configuring. So this is the thing we need to do in the speaker API later on in order to be able to authenticate users. Mm. The ID of the, the application ID URI. Application ID URI. Oh, oh, sorry, I messed up, I messed up. Application ID more I, so this is what I need, which is not something I have on him, but I still have it in my clipboard. It's too far down. Um, oh, that's that's the big bobo. Active Directory App Registration So I need this value over here
Let's see if this works. Back five. Strange this isn't added. Try to get token. Next token could not be acquired. Yada yada. Was not found in a tenant. Do I need to? Pretty sure this is all I did. Resource. I, I still think this should be a good, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Probably have some. This post isn't very useful. Application and get X token. So apparently I had this working before. Service token provider, X token, authorization. Oh, this this works at some point in time. Someone else has something to say about this. Mm. So doing the same. The main thing you need, but we will also need the APIs, API, URI, external MSI. Okay, so let's try the application ID. So um <coughs> So what is this? Yeah. 
required. I think this is something. The files aren't locked. Good, good, good. works so it's my local Visual Studio. Why is it this so so this is white. If anyone knows if you can turn this JSON view to dark it would be great. Uh jot.io Let's see what this token looks like. And it's... Yes! So this is the security group I'm in. And this is the role. So... Stuff works. I got what I need and obviously some other information. But this is what I wanted. I want this role with my free uh, AAD account. So this is good. Uh, now I just do... It's still strange. I have to dive into why this doesn't work on my local machine. And I want to change this back to the API. Well, do I? Uh, and why not? So this value. Because I have this application URI, I better use it. Uh, so this can be gone. So now what I'm doing now is making an HTTP call to my weather forecast service. As you can see over here, this is the response. So exactly the weather forecast. And I'm having an authorization token being added, a bearer token added to this request with the appropriate roles. So this is good. And I will commit this stuff. This is 
let's see what I have now so everything is inside added HP controller package reference and changed this so cool create doing a and the very bit replaced <coughs> so this is being committed and that's all for now so what we did today is adding application roles to my speaker API two application roles one for reading one for writing afterwards uh, spent some time on retrieving a token from AD. Apparently this doesn't work at the moment on my machine, which is strange. I'll dive into this tomorrow or maybe some other time. Uh, I do want to see this work from my local machine because it's, this is important stuff. I might, might need to... Is there a new update? Check for updates. I need to check for updates or something. I thought I was up to date. Yes, I'm up to date. Might need to install some Azure stuff on my machine. I don't know. Uh, I'll figure it out. And that's it. So I'm making an authenticated request to my speaker API. And tomorrow I will add authentication to this uh, to this API. Uh, this is already described in my uh, in my in my blog, so I'll probably use it. So setting up API authentication, which is adding this piece of JSON to your application settings or your well your application. Adding some authorization, and that's it. And then we use roles to do API uh, controller authentication. That's for tomorrow. Uh, hope to see you there again, and uh, have a good night or morning or afternoon, whatever. Thank you for watching, and see you tomorrow.